بسم الله الحمد لله الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ولا أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال تبارك هو تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقول الله حق تقاته ولا تموتون إلا وأنتم مسلمون رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لسان يفقه قولي وجعل لي وزيرا من أهلي أمين يا رب العالمين so I just want to speak to you about this topic how to be an easy going person in islam we think sometimes that if you are religious you have to be a tough guy you have to be a difficult to deal with or difficult to work with or you are very rigid if you have to be religious this might be true for other religions but for islam the exactly opposite is true and i will i'll tell you a few our hadith today inshallah and a practical method from the life of Rasulullah how to be an easygoing person. But easygoing personality in Islam, first of all, what is easygoing personality? Um, that you are a relaxed person, you are a person who is easy to work with, easy to talk with, easy to deal with. You're not compromising on your principles, but at the same time, you're not always complaining. That is easy to go person. And there are three hadiths I want to share in this context. First hadith, Sahih. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Man kana layyinan hayyinan sahlan harramahu allahu ala nar. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Hellfire will be forbidden for, for that person, so he cannot enter into hellfire if he will have three characteristics. And just imagine coming from the mouth of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You will be thinking, what are those three characteristics? And the three characteristics does not include any rocket science. He says those three characteristics is layyinan, hayyinan, sahlan. What is layyinan? Layyinan, every person who is soft spoken. Every person who is soft spoken, or kind hearted, can be the translation of lenient. Or, or uh, layyinan. Second, hayyinan, a lovable person. And third, sahlan, a easygoing person. He's easy to work with, easy to deal with. If you have these three characteristics, hellfire will be forbidden for you. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. Amin ya Rabb. May Allah include us all in these who have these three characteristics. Amin ya Rabb. Subhanallah, sometimes Islam sounds so easy, <laughs> but we are the one who made it difficult, subhanallah. That you have to do this, you have to do that. If you want to stay away from hell, Rasulullah is giving simple guidelines what you have to do, subhanallah. Second, second hadith in Sunan Tirmizi, Sahih hadith again. Rasulullah said to the companions, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, the narrates, radiallahu anh, Should I not tell you something? some characteristics which will going to make hellfire forbidden for you and sahaba says yes sure tell us and then he said three things one of them is different than the previous hadith he says those three things if you have hellfire will be forbidden for you first is kullu qareebin whoever is easily accessible easily approachable hellfire will be forbidden for him means he's easily approachable in gatherings easily approachable when someone needs him in the community. Second, hayyin and sahal, third, same thing. Kind-hearted, lenient, easy-going person. If you will have this characteristics, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is saying, al-far will be forbidden for you. Third hadith, before we can see how, practical, how practically speaking we can have these characteristics. Third hadith is mentioned in Bukhari and Muslim also, is muttafaq alayhi. Rasulullah says, and all the people who are working or in business field, you should remember this hadith, subhanAllah. Rasulullah says, Rahimallahu rajulan, samhan, samhan, iza ba'a wa iza ishtara wa iza iqtada. May Allah have mercy on a person who is samhan. I'm not translating the word samhan. May Allah have mercy on a person, on a man or a woman who is samhan. What is samhan? It can be translated as kind attitude, lenient, generous, easygoing person, samhan. Whenever he buys something, 
whenever he sells something, whenever he's working, is a whenever he gives payment to someone and he's expecting to get back his payments. He's easygoing, he's lenient, he's generous. May Allah have mercy on such person. Many a times when you are in the business field, you will try to squeeze the other person. Try to earn a penny or more. And then you will say, see, I'm smart. Rasulullah says, as long as you are happy with the deal, don't try to squeeze the other person. As long as mutually you are agreed, he's happy. Don't try to squeeze the other person. Be generous. And again, this tells us that easygoing mentality is encouraged in Islam, subhanAllah. Now with that, how to have this easygoing personality? I know if you see psychology books, you will find from their perspective. But if you see Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he was the most easygoing person. So I'll tell you three to four points from his life, how we can become easygoing in our life, inshallah. First, stay positive and don't keep complaining about small, small things about everyone and everything in your life. Stay positive. That's the first thing. You know, subhanAllah, this is, there is a beautiful hadith about this, that do not complain about small, small things. In Sahih Muslim, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa after praying Salatul Fajr, one day he went to his house and he asked Aisha, Aisha, do you have an shay? Do you have anything for breakfast? What Aisha responded? Aisha said, La, we don't have anything for breakfast. What was the response of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Rasulullah sallallahu response was, Idan asum. Okay, then I'm fasting. He didn't scream, oh, you didn't have anything. You didn't cook anything. No, he's an assume. If you didn't have anything, I'm fasting that entire day. Next day, he assumed that still Aisha won't have anything. Next day, he went. Next day, after Salat al-Fajr, do you have anything for breakfast? She said, yes, I, we have something today. Then he said, is an uftir. Okay, then I will break my fast. Subhanallah, he was an easygoing person. Did you see how beautiful their akhlaq was? Neither Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Oh, you didn't have anything. Nor Aisha radiallahu anha said, Why didn't you bring grocery for me? No, they were easy going people. Easy to deal with, easy to work with, easy to talk with. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Second, so first is stop complaining about small, small things and be grateful to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given to you. This is the lesson from the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Second thing, when you are talking and interacting with people, truly listen to people. Stop bragging about your achievements. Genuinely listen to stories of the people. Everyone have their story. Let them share. Don't be arrogant person. Truly listen to them. Give them your shoulder so that they can lean on. This is the second lesson we are learning from the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi Be a good listener. Rasulullah sallallahu was speaking in a khutbah. This hadith is mentioned in Bukhari. Rasulullah sallallahu was mentioning, uh, speaking in khutbah. And you know, if Sharia, you are not even supposed to say Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum as -salam during the khutbah. Because you have to pay attention to the khatib. Rasulullah is speaking and one guy stand, one companion stand from the gathering and he says, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, can you make dua for us? Our properties are burned, our means of transportation are being destroyed. Can you please make dua for us during the khutbah? I know what will happen if any one of you will do this with me right now. The volunteers will come and then all those uncles and aunties and brothers and sisters will stand and they will say, Haram, 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 Haram. Why are you speaking during the khutbah? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. he did not say, brother, you should have come to me before. <laughs> he, during the khutbah, listened to that person that he is asking him to make dua. He raised his hand, he made dua for him and then he continued his khutbah. Subhanallah. <laughs> this shows what? Be a good listener. Be a good listener. Third, third, be generous in your compliments. Again, it doesn't mean that you have to overload people with their unnecessary compliments, but be generous when you are talking to people. We are 
only aggressive when it comes to criticism. But when it comes to compliments, when a person deserves the compliments, I don't know why we are so stingy. I don't know why. Rasulullah was the most generous person, not only in terms of wealth, even in terms of his words. He would appreciate the good in people. And I'll just mention a few stories. Don't loss into these examples. Our topic is how to be an easygoing person. But I'll just tell you how generous was Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu that people would love to talk to him. When he would talk to Abu Dhar Ghaffari radiallahu an, he would say, Ma azallatil khadra, wala aqallatil ghabra min, lahj, uh, ghabra min lahjatin, min, min, min zi lahjatin aslaka min Abu Dhar. Abu Dhar, in the entire face of the earth, you are the most truthful man. Can you imagine this? Rasulullah is praising a companion by saying, in the, on the entire face of the earth, you are the most truthful man. He's, a, he's appreciating his companion's truthfulness. He's complimenting his companion on something good. Then talking to Bilal radiallahu anh, he says, Ya Bilal, haddithni bi arja amalin amiltahu fil islam fa inni sami'atu daffana alayk bay adi fil jannah. Bilal, what are you doing? What a special act you did? Because I heard your footsteps in front of me in Jannah. And Bilal said, I didn't do anything special, but I'm just praying two rakah after making wudu. Complimenting people. Talking about Umm Ayman, a famous female companion. Rasulullah says, Man sarrahu wa yatazawwaja imratan min ahlil jannah wa yatazawwaj hazil mara. Whoever wants to marry a woman from the people of Jannah, they should marry Umm Ayman. Complimenting, complimenting, complimenting. Be generous with your words if you want to be an easygoing person. People will love to hang around with you if you are an easygoing person, as people would love to hang around with Rasulullah in terms of the companions. And the last thing, how to be an easygoing person from the practical standpoint. Develop empathy. Develop empathy. Ability to understand the feelings of others. This is empathy. Select specific words, not to hurt people, but to make sure that you understand what they are going through. This is called empathy. All the prophets were actually by default designed in this fashion. That they understand the feelings of each other. They consider the feelings of each other. They would not use the words to personally hurt someone. You know, about Yusuf alayhi salam, when he was talking to prisoners, those two prisoners, if you know the story of Yusuf alayhi salam, when he was talking to two prisoners in the prison and he was trying to help them for about the dream interpretation. So when those two prisoners came to Yusuf alayhi salam for the dream interpretation, Yusuf alayhi salam, he did not address both of them by saying, Ya ayyuhal mujriman, arbabu mutafarriquna khayrun amillah wahidul qahar. He said, Yusuf Ali Salam, and addressing those two prisoners, he did not say, Oh, criminals, I will tell you your dream interpretation. He says, Oh, my companions of prison, I will tell you your dream interpretation. Did you see how he changed his style? Even the select that what you are going through, I'm going through the same pain. You are in prison, I'm in prison, we are companions. I can put myself in your shoes. When you do this, when you have this empathy within you, this is a sunnah of all the prophets, you will basically win the hearts of people and then they will listen to you, just like in the uh, in Surah Yusuf. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely to give us this ability so that we can develop easygoing attitude towards others inshallah ta'ala let's make dua allah mansur al islam wal muslimin allah maghzul man khazal adina muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wala taj'alna ma'ahum allahumma la taj'alna zamban illa ghafarta wala hamman illa farrajta wala daynan illa qadayta wala hajata min hawaij dunya wal akhira illa qadayta ya arhamar rahimin wala maridan illa shafayta wala maytan illa rahimta wala dhalan illa hadayta ya arhamar rahimin allah akbar